says, I'll say yes, Lord, I'll say yes. To your will, Lord, I'll say yes. Where you lead me, I'll, I will go. I'll say yes, Lord, I'll say yes. Praise the Lord. We're just going to sing this song before we go forward and call two of the young children to come and read tonight's scripture. Praise the Lord. Why can we start to read? I'll say yes, Lord.
Jesus, your apostle, my name is praise the Lord, Master Chandra, Master Joseph, Mr. Tom, Brother William on the platform joining us in moderation. Praise the Lord, Pastor Bernard. Praise the Lord, Elder Chaplin, Apostle Denny. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, William Stewart. Pastor Epine, praise the Lord. Pastor Apostle Johnson, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Apostle God. Praise the Lord. Greetings to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Tonight we're going to go forward and we're going to ask. Praise the Lord. Samuel Spencer, praise the Lord. And Amir Clark to come and read tonight's scripture for us. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you turn your Bibles to Romans 8, verse 14 and 28 and 29, praise the Lord. And Matthew 21, verse 28 to 31. When you find it, please stand. But what think ye? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go to <clears throat> go to work today in my family. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, son, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him the first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go to the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen him, repented not afterward, that he might believe him. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. For as many, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God shall be sons of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purposes. For whom, for whom he did foreknow, his he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that might be the first one among many brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, so we know the Lord works on our behalf. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am so excited tonight. Praise the Lord. I can't contain it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The thought that came to me is that before I start, all young people stand. Praise the Lord. Every young person stand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every young person stand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says, for many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen? So we are what? Sons and daughters. Praise the Lord. 
And it also says for those who work, that God works for good for them that love God. Praise the Lord. We love the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. According to his purpose. Praise the Lord. The thought that came to me, right? And in verse 15 it says, he hasn't given us the spirit of fear. He hasn't given us the spirit of body. Praise the Lord. We are sons and daughters of God. We have power and authority in Jesus' name. Amen? We are walking in kingship because we are royalty. Amen? So tonight I want you to give all that you have. And before we go further, we are going to worship. Man. And we're going to give the Lord all that we have to have because we are royalty. We are daughters and sons of God. We're supposed to stand with our head held high because our God has gone before us. He is for everything that we do according to His will. So tonight we have to be in His will. Amen? We have to be in His will. Because as much preaching and preaching that can be done, as much teaching can be done, as long as we are not operating, we will not receive. And we don't want that tonight. We want to be called, pulled out of the building tonight. We want the lights to turn on off tonight because we're going to have such a great time in this presence. Praise the Lord.
invite you to join us on the platform. Praise the Lord, brother Prince, to join us on the platform. Good. Sister Keisha, to join us on the platform. Praise the Lord, Sister Patricia Parks, to join us on the platform. Praise the Lord, Daniel Effingham, brother Daniel, to join us on the platform. All you leaders. Praise the Lord, and you can join us on the platform in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.
because the presence of God is here. And if He can do it for me, praise the Lord, He can do it for you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you.
is just open for anyone who wants to give anything. I'm not going to take any more of the time. So, young people, who has your lead, who will be the first in Jesus' name?
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Truly, I honor the Spirit of God. And I want to thank God for what He's been doing in our midst. And I pray, Apostles, praise the Lord, General, who was here. All pastors and all the young people, ministers, pastors, all the saints of the Most High God. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to, I have enjoyed all of the, what I have heard. Some you have to take it and examine it again. But God has been good to us, hasn't he? God has healed us, he's poured out his spirit, and he's good all the time. Praise the Lord. But I had a thought in my heart and I was thinking of, how do you share this? Because sometimes, um, I don't know how it will be understood. We say yes to the Lord, and we start the journey. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. But there are many times we might say yes, and there are many times we might say no because we don't understand. Does that make sense? You might say no to God because you don't understand. Has anybody said no, then you realize later that it was God who was talking and you didn't understand? Has that happened to anybody? Bless the Lord. So that's what I want to talk about a bit. So that when we say yes to the Lord, and on the way we don't understand certain things, we don't beat ourselves. When the Lord spoke to Peter, the Apostle Peter, and gave him a vision, and he said, he showed him a net covering the, all the four corners of the air. And there were things on that net creepy things, things that they call unclean. And his, the Lord said, God said to Peter, kill and eat. That was God who said it. What did he say? He said, no. I wouldn't eat anything common or unclean. It was because he didn't understand. He didn't understand. And I just thank God for his mercies. In that even before we come to salvation, there was a sin of ignorance. Leviticus 4. You could read on that. When you were ignorant about a thing, and you did not know much about it, and then you come to understand that it's space for you to repent and turn. Does that make sense? There is space to repent and turn. But what I want to encourage us tonight, because I, my testimony will be long to give. But I just want to tell you that sometimes you must have said no to God. And you realize later on that it was God. But at a time you didn't understand what God was doing. Now, we read the scripture where the son said, no to daddy. I'm not going to the vineyard. I'm not going to work. But later on, he kind of understood that I shouldn't have done that. And he changed his mind. And he repented. And he went to do the right thing. Praise the Lord Jesus. There are sometimes we, as we walk with the Lord, we come to those things that we didn't understand. We made a mistake. And then we come to realize that it was God who was doing it. Repent and turn. Repent and go back and do what God said you should do. Because if you don't, your life wouldn't go further. Your life will be blocked. Many decisions that God came and told us and we didn't understand and we said no. But because we said no later on when God opened your eyes to do it, pride is holding back from going to do it. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. There are sometimes I think even in the church, we have young men and young women, it's good uh, looking for husband and wives. But sometimes I think sometimes God sends the people along, but that's not their choice. 
That's not what they're looking for. And they said no. And it goes down the line. And then sometimes you realize I made a mistake. But I can't turn back to go back. Sometimes it's not too late. But sometimes it's pride. And sometimes God is calling you. You know that you heard the voice of God. You were disobedient and you went out. But when you go out and God begins to convict you that I am really speaking to you, return to the Lord and say yes. So I'm just giving us this. Let's our mind be open. God is gracious and is merciful. And if God did say something to you to do and you didn't understand it and you said no, God is giving you the chance to go and make it right. If it is to go and apologize to somebody because they gave you some instruction that you didn't like and you were snobbish, go back and apologize and say, I'm sorry. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor, for those words. I'm still even open for any of the young people who has anything you want to share. Oh, sorry, Brother Dan Gregor. I want to tell the story. Uh, 
um, about that. Um, when I was young, I met this man. And I knew him. Oh, I knew about him, but I didn't really know him. I met him a few times, but I never really knew him. Because there's one thing about this man. To know him is to love him, and to love him is to know him. And when you really actually know him and love him, there's certain things you can't do. There's certain places you can't go. I've been in the physical handcuffs. I've been in the spiritual handcuffs. I've felt suicidal. I've felt mentally ill. I felt like I was losing my mind. But I want to introduce you to this man. Um, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form of comeliness at all after seeing his mother. But that this means there is nothing about him physically that we don't even like him. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire. He is despised and rejected of men. I rejected him. He is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we, as it were, are faces from him. I've heard from him plenty of times. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of blood and afflicted. That means when he was beaten, when he was put on the cross, people looked at him and said, he must have done something terrible for them to leave him up there for so long. For them to, to just beat him in such a disrespectful way, for them to spit on him. People thought that this guy had done something terribly wrong. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our enemies. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord of the iniquity of us all. But, Hebrews 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold our fast profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of everything that we've been, we go through. Every time we feel tempted, we have a high priest who can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And was in all the points tempted like as we are. Yet he is without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And this is my one of my favorite new scriptures, Hebrews 7 24. But this man, but this man, because he continueth ever, hath no changeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make an intercession. Jesus is still making intercession for our sins right now. But this man, because he continues ever, his sole purpose was to plead for every sin, for every time you feel down, he's there. His sole purpose was to die so that we could be free. But this man. Here is a high priest, perfectly adapted to our needs, as we speak to holy, blameless, unstained by sin, separated from sin, and absorbed by our intentions. Now, unto him that is able to keep one of you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with the seed of joy.
grateful just as I am grateful. And so we want to encourage somebody else. Don't ignore this window of opportunity. Amen. You don't know how much time you will have. But today, while it is cold today, there is a chance. There is an opening. There is a door that is before you. And if you say yes, you can step into salvation. You can step into freedom. You can step into life. Some of us have been waiting for the last night and uh, we say we don't believe in luck but I would say you're very lucky that we're still here because God could have come yesterday, he could have come Friday but there's a window of opportunity today and I'm glad that we're here and so wherever you sit in the house tonight, wherever you sit, God is right next to you. Amen. You might not see him, but he's sitting beside you. And we have been praying, and so we've set some new positions, some bombs in the spirit, and they will go up tonight in various places. So mind where you sit, and mind you sit next to a person.
I, I, um, as I was praying for the convocation, I, I saw, I saw something different, and I was sharing it with a couple of my sisters. I, and as our pastor Johnson was preaching on Friday, it came back to me, and I shared it on Saturday morning in the prayer meeting. And I have been thinking about the day of Pentecost. So I can't help it; I just desire that experience. I don't know about you. You might want to receive the Holy Ghost in a different way, but I like the idea of that. Day. I don't know how you feel when you leave it, but I want that experience. I was thinking about what, what would happen, what would happen if we, if we shut the door? What would happen if nobody moved, nobody went to the toilet, nobody, nobody walked up and down? Close the door.
So three times he went to Eli and said, you call me. Eli said, you know what you do now? When you go back, if you hear the voice again, so speak, Lord. Yes, so we hear. But what character I want to leave you with is Isaiah. Isaiah said, here when Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and he strayed from the temple. And the angel cry holy. Today we have brilliant assistance that has drawn away from holiness. But the Bible said in Psalms 93, Holiness you come at thy house forever. Yeah. You understand? It's not talking about this building. It's talking about you and me. Because the Bible said, Your body is the temple of the living God. And if God is not living inside you, you are lost. You got the holiness become in my house. If God is to come to live inside us, we have to be clean up. And only He can do the cleansing. Amen. Amen. So He called you just as you are. Because the Bible said in that day there shall be a fountain open for sin and for uncleanness, for separation. Now when Isaiah heard the voice of God, he said, look here. I said, look here. He said, I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. And he said, I am among people with unclean lips. He said, woe is me because I'm undone. But you know what the Bible said? When he, when he acknowledged the state he was in, God commanded the shouts to take it. Tongues and take some coals of the fire. God has a hunter when there is fire. And touched his lips. And there was something about this fire. It did not burn on his lips. Right. But it burned out the sin that was in his life. God has a holy fire. But he saw the fire. Burn in the bush. And the bush was not quenched. It can burn out all your bad ways. Look at the rest of their ways. There were sexual ways. There were not just ways. There were wrong ways. And all the ways. Of sin and That's the there is nothing he can't burn out. That's right. Paul was almost a murderer, a persecutor, and that light that shone on him burned out all oh, that was of sin and that was sad. You can never change the matter. And this is what happened after. He said, and I hear the voice of the Lord. Say, who will go for us? Yes. And who shall I send? Shall I send? Amen. He said, here am I. Yes. Abraham said, here am I. Yes. Tonight come out of the hiding place. Amen. And you hear his voice in this house. And say, Lord, here am I. Amen. Amen. My need, my need to hear the voice of God. Yes. And tonight if you hear his voice, don't put him off for tomorrow. Amen. Because it can get so hard that God don't talk to you anymore. That's right. Come on, don't tell him, don't insult the Holy Spirit. Say yes. God will take care of the impossible things. Don't try to straighten your life out. Come and tell God, straighten me out. He yes, sent Paul to a place called the street called Straight. Uh, yeah. What a place. Yes. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey.
consultation of this and the time is now over. So we're going to stand up and ask the past to bring some to pray for tonight's conference. If anyone, everyone can please stand. And then the choir will come to
stand at this time. If you've got legs, you can stand. Please stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to bring on the preacher this time. Praise the Lord. But I don't know how many hallelujahs there have been since we started on Friday morning at 8 o'clock. But I believe that God is deserving of one more. Can we give him one more? Hallelujah. Amen. The anointed minister Stuart in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We want to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So pray for her. Amen. While she delivers the word, the word will go forth with power. Amen. And have an impact on lives. God bless you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
what he put in your spirit, I know what he's put in mine. But that's what's needed to deliver it. So you pray.
We're there or we're not there. Is that right? We say wait sometimes in the answer. And sometimes we just say no. Parents, sometimes we just say no. Children, sometimes you have to live with it. Painful, discouraging sometimes. When you've been saving up, waiting, expecting. Your older brother or sister got it. It seems to be good. But your parents say no. What do we do when God says no? I've been doing a couple of character studies. And you'll understand where I'm going when I give you some characters. Three characters. Job, David, and Paul. We look at... Oh, I don't know. Maybe a quick testimony first. I remember when my marriage was going through a rough time. And I was told that all I needed to do was love him. But it would be alright. <laughs> I loved him. And I loved him more. I love him so much. But my tongue is not turned fool. I lied out. That's what my husband said. He said you turned fool. But that was what somebody counseled me to do. I never prayed for him to leave. Never prayed for him to die so I could marry somebody else. When he was unfaithful, I still prayed for him. In fact, I turned so full that when I was fasting one day, I'm telling you young people, we say some silly things. I said, Lord, I'm not going to eat breakfast again to receive him. <laughs> You will have situations where you 
say yes. But God, they have such a determination in their spirit that they say, even if God don't think, now and it must be unconditional. It can't be yes but. It can't be yes in a little while. Yes tomorrow. If it's not yes now, it's no. That's what it is. If it's not yes now, it's no. Now, why is it difficult? When God says no to us, I haven't gone to the characters yet and I will try to. You know, you know why it's difficult? Because if the word of God says healing is the children's need, if he withholds no good thing from them that walk uprightly, and he gives you Psalm 101 when you're complaining wife and say you must walk upright in your house and you try your best to and your husband still misbehave on God then how difficult is it to comprehend what is going on sometimes we feel it's about us but it's not always about us we're clear about what happened to Job because we know the end of the story Job didn't know the end of the story. Pardon his wife. She didn't know the end of the story. Everything that Job lost, his wife lost it too. The seven children came out of her womb. We weren't told he had more than one wife. And so she lost too. And then she looked at him and looked at him and she can't even help. I don't know if you've ever looked at somebody. I never thought I'd want an unsafe person to die. But when I looked at the pain of my father with cancer, yes. I thought, Lord, if he's not saved now, Lord, let him just rest and go. But you know it's eternal damnation, so it's not a nice thing. But have you ever seen someone suffer to the point where you think, Lord Jesus? If it's not deliverance one way, it must be another. I'm not pardoning Mrs. Job, but take time with her sometime. Job turned around to the point of cursing his days. He didn't curse God. But he said, he came to the understanding. Though you slay me, though you slay me, he recognized the devil couldn't do anything unless God I'm talking about some young ones, yes. even in church, yes. even in church, yes. crying in their bedroom yes. when their parents are arguing. Yes. And even though you cry and feel upset, yes. my God, what is the pain of a child when parents separate? My God, I heard my daughter tell somebody she felt like she was divorced. Yes. The devil is a lie. He was only married to me, not you. God is a good God. He's a good God. Yes. He's still love He's still love her. She got her own testimony. Yes. But I'm saying that to say it's not just one or two people suffering when our house is 
turn upside down. The children always suffer The devil seems to set an ambush in our homes. And I cannot for the life of me understand why two saved people can't stand up and pray against the devil. Bind him and set him out. Bible tells me one can put a thousand to fight and two ten thousand. There's power in your house. My God, if the devil can run from my house and me one march around. Yes. 
And when the prophet spoke to him, he told him that God's judgment was on him and that the child was going to die. And now, this is what happened from 15, let me say. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, that's Bathsheba, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and laid all night upon the earth. And, uh, and the elders of his house arose and went to him to rise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will we then vex him? How will he then vex himself if we tell him the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered and David perceived the child was dead, um, therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He said. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, changed his apparel, and came unto the house of the Lord and worshipped. And then he came to his own house, and when he required, they said, Bread before him, and he did eat. Where am I going to with this? They couldn't understand how he could turn in that way. Now, what I'm saying is this David knew that judgment was set, but he said, God is merciful.
able to do anybody else. It's 2 Corinthians 12. You know it well. You remember our Apostle Paul. You know him. We see him. I don't have time to go through his character as such. But we see all the things he experienced. It's, it's recorded in about 10,000 miles from one end of the Roman Empire to the next, preaching the gospel. Over a period of 30 years, it said, she prayed. We were told, I think, yesterday. Yeah. We, we read that portion, so I won't go into it. But let's get to the point of what was happening with him. Paul realized in the scripture that I just said, which I haven't read, that because of what God had endowed him with, because of the revelations, because of the anointing, because of what God had given to him, that if he wasn't careful, people could squire him. You hear what I'm saying? Why do I say it that way? Do you remember he had to say, some of you say, some are of Paul, some are of Apollos. People can spoil you. We have to be so careful because there's a tendency in man to boast. Which one of us don't like to be said, well done? It's nice to be told, well done. But we just have to be careful that in everything we give the glory to God. Because what have we got that is good that we didn't get from God? So where then is their boasting, Paul said? But this is the part now, and we know it well. Paul said three times I pray about this. I pray for other people and they were healed. I've labored so much and I've seen other people deliver. But here am I now, Lord, and three times I pray about this situation and the answer every time was no. But God was good to the apostle and he gave him an understanding. In fact, I don't even like when people sometimes try and make up an explanation to make you feel better. You never been in that situation where you just don't know what's going on. So why did my son die at 19? I don't need anybody to come and make up a story to make me feel better. Because it doesn't really help. Do you understand what I mean? Sometimes we should just say, I don't know. try anything because you might not have the grace to come out of that one. Alright, those who are here this morning know what I'm talking about. So let's go back here. The Lord said to Paul, you know it, verse 9 of that portion I gave you, my grace is sufficient for me. So my strength is made perfect in weakness. Perfect. It will excel. Amen. It will excel. It's not that God needs us to be weak. He just needs us to be submitted. Do you understand what I'm saying? He needs us to be pliable. He needs us to be in a point of full surrender. Sometimes people come to the altar and they have no desire to give up. And one of the things the Lord has often said, and I, and I keep repeating it, so forgive me if I said it to you because he gave it to me. Without the full surrender, you will not get a full deliverance. 
So just before I come to the final point, which is, it's about strength. But let me just give you one other thought. Because the Lord dropped this in my spirit this morning. And it might be a bit controversial. Will God say no to giving someone the Holy Ghost? Do any of you believe it? Will God say no to giving anyone the Holy Spirit? Can anybody answer me? Our pastor says, of course. It is evident. It is evident that if you have a gift, you make the decision who you want to It's conditional. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. The Bible tells me that if you hunger,
this truth. Yeah. The word of God says, as thy days are, so shall thy strength be. As thy days are, you can't have a worse day than God is able to strengthen you, old God. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God told me before I went to the old Bailey that I would not be ashamed. And I didn't understand. Remember on the train, I had a quote for him to come back in. Go remember. I didn't understand what God was saying. And so I thought, well, he's going to come out. But when they said guilty, my God, I wanted the ground to open and swallow me up. But since then, I recognize what God was saying. Your children's sin is not your sin. When they're of the age, when they know right from wrong, you have prayed and fasted and shown them the right way. This sin is not your sin.
life. You might find hardship when you're forsaken by a loved one, but stand. Your yes is yes for now and for eternity. It's not even till May. That's right. You understand me? Because plenty of them say comes what may and may come and turn upside down. It's not even till May. It's for life and eternity.